it's not that uh, he was exposed for being a pedophile. No, 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 that's not what happened. Uh, you see, um, what I learned in the water is that uh, he was actually exposing the New World Order, and uh, now we're going to be playing uh, Whack an Atheist. Guys, we got we got to talk about Kent Hovind. We got to talk about old Kenty boy. Yay! <laughs> but first, the fan art section. This one is from Bicornosaurus. It's hopefully not too lewd for YouTube. I don't think it's too lewd for YouTube, but there's a lot of chess there. The next one we have here is from, and I have to scroll down a bit, uh, Harley Quinn, aka Danny Kitty. Took, uh, LOL, took some anger out on this drawing. Cirrus dropping his hammer on the coin. The words on the picture says coin go bye bye oh whoa well that that coin definitely did get beat uh and i did have to skip one piece of fan art there because during the subathon we did earn enough for the comic dub so i'm going to be doing a dub of the comic that hex persona put in uh as my thing that i do the the comic dub that was earned by everybody during the subathon so look forward to that here in the next few weeks but till then Let's go ahead and get into the topic at hand. Kent Hovind! Preacher accused of enabling pedophile at creationist dino theme park. I wonder how discount Kenty boy feels now about his hero. Now, uh, go ahead and tell me if you're surprised, because I'm not. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Billy Summers had only known Kent Hovind for a couple of days when Hovind told him about the convicted child sex offender who sometimes visited Hovind's Christian amusement park. They were in Hovind's car picking up supplies for Dinosaur Adventureland and the creationist theme, that was the creationist theme park that Kent Hovind operates in a quiet pocket of Alabama. Hovind spoke about a longtime friend who had done time for battery and committing lewd acts on children under the age of 14. I have a feeling you should not be calling those kinds of people longtime friends. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't feel like that's a good thing to do. Hovind claimed the conviction was a sham and that the friend was actually being persecuted for his work. Exposing the New World Order. Huh. You know, actually, uh, it's not that uh, he was exposed for being a pedophile. No, 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 that's not what happened. Uh, you see, um, what I learned in the water is that uh, he was actually exposing the New World Order. And uh, now we're going to be playing uh, Whack an Atheist. <laughs> Golly gee willikers, Kent Hovind! In my head, I was like, well, I'm stuck in the middle of Alabama right now, riding along with him, so I can't say nothing, Summers told the Daily Beast. In interviews with former workers and recordings from the internal uh, Dinosaur Adventureland meetings, people close to the theme park expressed concern about Hovind's cavalier attitude towards crime on the compound. Hovind is a controversial young Earth creationist who preaches that the Earth is less than 10,000 years old and that dinosaurs rode on Noah's Ark. Behind his literalist interpretation of the Bible is a more creative interpretation of the law. Hovind previously served nine years in prison for tax avoidance while he and while he was behind bars. Fed seized and sold an early iteration of Dinosaur Adventureland that Hovind operated in Pensacola, Florida. Hey, it's where I grew up. The park featured a zip line, a fossil dig pit, a creation museum, a tricycle racetrack, and rather than relaunch the Pensacola Park after his release from prison, Hoven opened the new Dinosaur Adventure Land in Alabama. Well, the reason he did that is because somebody gifted him the compound in Alabama, and I'm going to be honest, I don't think he wants to be anywhere near uh, Pensacola anymore, because that's where his son Eric is, and Eric seized his entire media empire. So... I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's a reason he doesn't want to do that. Just... Just saying. Beep. Hold on. I am reminded that my settings are wonky. Beep. Hoven Preezy. Uh, do, do. The Dinosaur Adventure Land woes now go far beyond Hoven's tax troubles, which shuttered the first park. 
since Hoven launched his latest incarnation of Dinosaur Adventure Land in 2016. Two wives have left him, one citing financial concerns with the park and the other because he assaulted her. Volunteers and staffers have also quit Dinosaur Adventure Land over a range of grievances. Among their concerns are repeated visits uh, to Dinosaur Adventure Land by Hoven's sex offender friend, who allegedly... What? Molested a child at the park. Oh, Kent. The fuck are you doing? And then, of course, there was the death by drowning of a different child in a pond used for baptisms. Hoven's assault of his now ex-wife, allegations of theft of ministry money by a Hoven colleague, the arrest of that colleague for a drugged out alleged carjacking, and a late night evidence removal operation by more than a dozen of the church's volunteers. And then the fatal shooting of a dog near Dinosaur Adventureland. Holy fucking shit, Kent. You okay, buddy? I don't think you're okay. You don't sound okay. The property is gorgeous, but it's the inside of, of it that's dark. Julie Shunk, Hoven's former secretary who lived and worked at Dinosaur Adventure Land for three years, told the Daily Beast, a lot of people don't know this. The devil comes as an angel of light, too. Sure sounds like an adventure. Yes, uh, yeah. Many of Hoven's flock live in cabins and campers on the 140-acre Dinosaur Adventure Land property in Alabama's rural uh, Conica County. The theme park features animals, playgrounds, a science center, a swimming and baptism pond, and statues of dinosaurs which Hoven and other creationists believe coexisted with humans a mere thousand years ago, or mere thousands of years ago. The devil, I think, is using dinosaurs to... T oh, yeah, right. The devil, I think, is using the dinosaurs to teach boys and girls the Earth is a millions of years old. And it's propaganda, he told a local news outlet. It's not true at all. Some of Dinosaur Adventure Land's resident staffers uh, began as vacation goers. Mark Stoney, a former worker, first came to the compound for what he expected to be a brief visit. I was only going to stay the afternoon, but uh, somehow old Kent Hoven convinced me to stay and put me to work on some projects, which was kind of what I was interested in doing, Stoney told the Daily Beast. He finally left after three days and returned to his parents' house, where he expressed his desire to live and work at the Dinosaur Adventure Land for a month with his young daughter. His parents objected, but after a 15-month custody battle, Stoney and his daughter moved to Dinosaur Adventure Land the same weekend he got her back. Cult alert! Hoven's checkered, checkered history was a matter of public record. A well-known tax protester who once boasted of not filing a tax return in 30 years, Hoven has repeatedly dealt with run-ins with the law. The incidents range from his refusal to secure permits for his original Florida-based Dinosaur Adventure Land to a 2006 conviction on 58 charges related to tax evasion. His then-wife, Joe, spent a year in prison for the scheme, and they later divorced. I'm like, Dr. Hoven, you're supposed to be sitting with the father, having sympathy for him and praying for him, not passing out your dinosaur cards so people can come. That's just psycho to me. Oh, that's in relation to the drowning. Holy fuck. Enzo, thank you for giving me your points for an oh, whoa. Whoa. Okay, let's keep going other more violent allegations followed him in 2002 he was arrested for alleged assault battery and burglary on tenants in a house he owned the case was later dropped after an alleged victim decided not to pursue the charges the situation was physically spiritually emotionally and financially draining she wrote online at the time in an interview with the daily beast hoven denies the allegations and accuse his accuser of attempted extortion Striker, thank you for redeeming your points for an uh, uh, you fucking DJ. But Hoven remains popular in Christian circles, where he's better known for the decades of creationist children's material that he's published under his Dr. Dino brand. My five kids were raised with his videos, and I thought he was amazing. Hoven's second wife, Mary Toko, uh, wrote in an open letter to Hoven's fourth wife in... <laughs> 2021, I wanted a man of God I could trust. 
Toko left Hoban in 20, 2017 in a Facebook post explaining the split. Toko described her increasingly frustrated efforts to ensure her husband and D Dinosaur Adventureland's finances were above board. It wasn't long before I began noticing certain things didn't seem to add up. My list of concerns started slowly and then began to grow. She claimed that when she brought her concerns to the Dinosaur Adventureland board, she was rebuffed. Whoo, boy. Hoven denied that Dinosaur Adventureland's bookkeeping was out of order and accused Toko of trying to take over the board. There's nothing wrong here, he said. We have CPAs that do all of our stuff every year. Our trustees uh, keep track of all that stuff, and uh, there's never been any illegal dealings. Cindy Lincoln, Hoven's third wife, also said she was initially charmed by the charismatic preacher. She first encountered Hoven through his video series while she was teaching preschoolers. After finishing the series in 2016, she learned Hoven was looking for workers at his new dinosaur adventure land. She packed her bags and moved from California to Alabama, where the theme park was still under construction. I started out in a tent and ended up Mrs. Hoven. Loken told the Daily Beast. She married Hoven in 2018. And by early 2020, I was experiencing huge red flags. Shunk, who greeted them uh, on arrival, noted that they did not appear to be related. Jones was white. The 11-year-old traveling with him was black. Dinosaur Adventureland operated for years in a half-open state, receiving visitors and volunteers before formally launching in 2018. The park does not have liability insurance, Hovid confirmed to the Daily Beast, describing the park's policy as enter at your own risk. Within two years of opening, the park would be the scene of a tragedy. Jesus. In March 2020, a visiting family's five young children were swimming in Dinosaur Adventureland's pond, which doubles as the theme park's baptism pool. Stoney, who was also at the pond with his daughter, recalled a commotion when one boy appeared to be struggling in the water. Adults rushed into the pond and pulled the child to the shore. But in the tumult, another boy, seven years old, went missing. The boy's father ran back into the lake and tripped over his boy. The child was pronounced dead at the hospital, where... Dinosaur Adventureland workers claim Hoven demonstrated something less than bedside manner. Kent Hoven is walking around the hospital, passing out ministry cards saying, Come to Dinosaur Adventureland, we'll give you tours. We're free. Everything's free. Come see us, recalled Shunk, Hoven's then secretary. And I'm like, Dr. Hovind, you're supposed to be sitting with the father, having sympathy for him and praying with him, not passing out your dinosaur cards so people can come. That's just psycho to me. I don't know what else to call it. I do uh, vaguely remember that, Hovind said when presented with Shunk's account. And uh, yes, I, I probably did that. Uh, my business card has the plan of salvation. They're actually gospel tracks, so I do that wherever I go. I'm, I'm trying to get people saved. I'm an evangelist. Anyone claiming that he acted inappropriately must have some other kind of axe they're grinding. That would be his guess, said Hoven. He holds no grudges whatsoever. The dad loves our ministry. A matter of fact, he paid to have the gazebo built at the end of our dock in honor of, our son, in honor of his son. Meanwhile, Hoven's third wife, Cindy Lincoln, was experiencing grave concerns about her new husband. Among other things, Lincoln and Hoven are currently locked in a dispute over whether she loaned Dinosaur Adventure Land the proceeds from the house she sold in California. Lincoln showed the Daily Beast a contract stipulating that she would receive $1,300 a month for 20 years. Hoven denies the Dinosaur Adventure Land entered into a contract. I discovered there was a cover-up going on. They tried to silence me. Oh, wait, no, this is this is Miss Hovind, not, not Hovind himself. They had me shunned, and ultimately, basically, he just kept doing strange and mean things to me until, basically, I fled. The cover-up, she said, involving a long-simmering allegation of drug use and pedophilia at the Dinosaur Adventure. What? The latter involving a good friend of Hoven's named Chris Jones. Court records show a pattern of allegations made against Jones by boys. While looking after two young boys from his church in 2001, one of the boys got mud in his clothing. While the seven-year-old was naked, Jones put him over his lap and hit him on the buttocks. In 2004, Jones befriended three other boys, aged 9, 11, and 12. I'm just gonna stop you right there. Why in the fuck?
Are you, as an adult, befriending people of ages 9, 11, and 12? Why? What What do you gain out of that? What? What? what, what why? In 2004, Jones's best uh, befriended three other boys. Defendant Jones told them before they watched a movie they had to play strip poke. Jesus, what the fuck? Defendant produced a deck of cards that explained the game to the boys. He dealt the cards and told the boys who won or lost each hand and directed the losers to take off some clothes. The boys did as instructed. Alex remembered he and Anthony stripped down to their underwear. Alex remembered only himself getting naked. E.G. remembered the other two boys stripped him naked and took off their own shirts. During the game, E.G. noticed the defendant's dick was getting larger and you could see it through his pants. Why? Why? This is fucking disgusting. Did you see Chris in bed with a kid? One dinosaur adventure land resident asks a ministry elder in the recording. Jones was convicted of three charges of lewd acts on children for the strip poker game and an act of battery for the nude spanking. Jones was acquitted on other charges, including two more counts of lewd behavior towards children in the case of two other boys and showing porn to a minor. These are the people who say that the LGBTQ is, is indoctrinating your kids, by the way. An early version of the criminal complaint also included a count of possessing child pornography, although that account was dropped in an amended complaint. Jones did not respond to repeated requests for comment. When Billy Summers visited Dinosaur Adventureland as a guest in 2017, he learned of Hoven's close friendship with Jones after mentioning that he lived in Aiken, South Carolina. Hoven replied that he knew a man from the area who sometimes visited Dinosaur Adventureland. Unprompted, Summer said that Hoven began explaining that Jones was a convicted child sex offender, but the charges were trumped up and Jones had merely been playing. I... <laughs> Kent, if you agree he was playing strip poker with the kids, why would you why would you say that's OK? Like, did, no, there's not a, well, actually, they caught, tried to get him for trying to expose the New World Order, uh, so they got him on the worst thing they could think of, which was pedophilia charges. And you're literally like, well, all he did was play strip poker with kids. Can't. Anybody that takes you seriously and thinks that kids are people to be protected should probably start throwing you under the goddamn bus at this point. Hoven said something like, but he stopped at his and their underwear, so they did nothing wrong. After returning home from Dinosaur Adventureland, Summers remained perturbed about Hoven's self-proclaimed friendship with Jones. He called Hoven with his concerns, and a recording of the call reviewed by the Daily Beast shows Hoven painting Jones as a persecuted victim of the New World Order. Jones got a job at Bohemian Grove. That's where they make all their plans for the New World Order. He got a job there and videotaped a bunch of stuff, and they wanted him in prison. A subject of fascination for early 2000 conspiracy theorists, Bohemian Grove is the site of an annual meetup for the rich and powerful. During a 2021 uh, Dinosaur Adventure Land meeting, a, re a recording of which was reviewed by the Daily Beast, Jones claimed to have provided footage of the Grove to InfoWars founder Alex Jones, who he says used it in a documentary. Alex Jones' assistant declined to state whether InfoWars' boss used Chris Jones' footage by saying, we don't talk to Demtards. That's the statement that is used to deny whether or not they actually used footage. News agencies that want to be taken seriously, you know. Summers was not convinced by Hovind's explanation and made a YouTube video about his concerns. Hovind uh, soon called him and demanded the video's removal. Voicemails, uh, voicemails reveal that. Jones also called Summers, blaming his arrest on the New World Order and downplaying his conviction. My actual crime? You want to know what the actual technical crime was? He said in a voicemail. It was throwing an 11 year old boy in the pool in his underwear. That's my big sex crime. 
Jones went on to note that even if I am guilty, hopefully the blood of Christ works. At least you're not questioning that. The blood of Christ works, man. We're all forgiven and cleaned up. Among Dinosaur Adventureland residents, Summer's video contributed to a creeping awareness of Jones's past. By November 2019, when Jones made one of his occasional visits to Dinosaur Adventureland, residents were uneasy. Shunk, Hoven's then secretary, recalled Hoven coming into her office and explaining that Jones was innocent, but that people were freaking out. I, I go outside and yeah, people with kids are taking their kids off the property. People are super mad. One father told his wife to grab their kids and put them in their cabin. Mark Stoney grabbed his child and went off campus. So did many other parents with children. They left. Coven apparently said he's got a right to wrestle with a kid if he wants. And you've got a right to say I'm not getting around Chris. Asked about Jones... Hoven told the Daily Beast that Jones had done nothing wrong, either in his criminal case or at Dinosaur Adventureland. He's come to visit here twice, I think, uh, never spends the night. But Jones did spend the night near Dinosaur Adventureland during the November 2019 visit. Oh, that's right, Hoven recalled, reminded of the incident. Uh, they did spend one night here. They were Jones and a young boy whose name the Daily Beast is withholding. Shunk, who greeted them on arrival, noted that they did not appear to be related. Jones was white, and the 11-year-old traveling with him was black. Uneasy, Shunk went to make two beds for the visitors in a dorm-style guest room. Hovind intervened. She said, no, 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 no. Hovind said, they're going to stay in the house next door. Asked whether he overruled Skunk, uh, Shunk, Hoven told the Daily Beast that I don't recall that at all. Uh, we have some 25 cabin spaces here. Uh, I gotta go for my Bible study now. When he returned from the group Bible study, Hoven said that Jones had stayed off campus, and Hoven handed the phone to another Dinosaur Adventureland resident who said Jones and the boy stayed in a nearby house that was being managed by a Dinosaur Adventureland elder. The house was just off Dinosaur Adventure Land property and has been owned by a series of Dinosaur Adventure Land associates. Shunk and her husband had briefly stayed there and were nearby finishing moving out. The only thing left in the building was a queen-sized mattress. She and Hoven wanted Jones and the boy to share the bed. I said, Dr. Hoven, they can't do that. It's inappropriate. And he's like, it's fine. I'm the boss. I'm in charge. Don't worry about a thing. I've got everything handled. You just go home and be with your husband. I'll see you tomorrow. I said fine, and I left. And so to this day, I'm going to be honest with you, I should have called the police. Asked whether Jones and the boys shared a bed, Hoban told the Daily Beast, I was not in the room with them, he said, adding that the child is uh, still very emotionally unstable. I understand, I, uh, and it wasn't on Dinosaur Adventureland property, but uh, if the child had said, hey, I'm scared, can I sleep with you? Uh, I don't know that that happened, uh, but I don't see, Chris is not a pedophile, if, if that's what you or anybody else is driving at. No one of the Daily Beast spoke to or made any similar allegations about the child's emotional state. He's one of the best kids I know, his mother told the Daily Beast. This gets grosser and grosser the farther I go in it. I had Kent, you know, this is a much... Uh, I had told Kent, you know, this is a much bigger problem that we need to be able to deal with, Stoney said. If Chris comes back, I'll be leaving. When Jones returned in January of 2021, Stoney kept his word. The day after Stoney's departure, Hoven held a meeting with Dinosaur Adventureland's residents and Jones in an attempt to allay concerns about Jones's past. A recording of the meeting appears to confirm some allegations about Jones' activity at Dinosaur Adventureland. <laughs> Did you see Chris in bed with a kid? One resident asked a ministry elder in the recording. I've seen Chris wrestling with a kid, uh, which I don't think was appropriate, but when there's any slightness of that, uh, sex effects conviction, sex events convictions, uh, you don't do that, the elder responded. I'm pretty sure I did, and I told Chris no more of that. Uh, the man goes on to explain that I was mad at Chris because I got up and I said, Chris, what's he in your bed for? You got these charges. What the heck are you doing in, with, the, with, the, with the kid in your bed for? Completely dressed. 
the way people say things, Hoven interjects, that he was in bed with a child, uh, uh, there's a way to make it sound worse than it is. <laughs> when Dinosaur Adventureland members complained that the situation looked bad in light of Jones's conviction, Hoven argues that's Chris's decision and the kid's decision. How people here react to that is their decision. He's got a right to wrestle with a kid if he wants to, and you've got the right to say, I'm not getting around, Chris. Later in the meeting, a, a, a DAL secretary complains that Jones is harming the theme park reputation and families. During Jones's previous stay, a mother of six children had called about a visit, but explicitly asked whether Jones was present. I changed the topic because I did not want to lie, but then I didn't want to tell the truth. I didn't know what to do, so I changed the topic, the secretary said. She realized that I did and said that answered my question. We won't be coming there anymore. After some discussion, a ministry elder announced that going forward, if somebody calls the ministry and asks if Chris there, just simply say the elders have got together and they've investigated it thoroughly. He's welcomed here and we take all precautions for anyone visiting here. Jesus Christ, how often do you have to deal with a problem for this to be what you do? Like, holy fucking shit. Ay, ay, ay. But the matter was far from closed. Stoney, newly removed from Dinosaur Adventureland uh, and upset about Jones's presence, began looking for the child who'd shared a bed with Jones in 2019. By summer of 2022, Stoney had made contact with the boy's mother. In a Facebook Messenger call that Stoney shared to YouTube in June, the boy's mother claimed that Jones touched her son's genitals through a paper towel during the trip. Reached for a comment, the boy's mother told the Daily Beast that Jones had been her boss at Boost at a Boost mobile store and that he sometimes volunteered to take two of her seven children to the mall. When he offered to take her son to the uh, Dinosaur Adventureland, she agreed, reasoning that Jones has never posed a problem to her children before, but she began having misgivings after the boy arrived at the theme park where, she said, Jones and Hoven called and asked for permission from her son to share a bed with Jones. I said, no, that's not okay. She told the Daily Beast during a 2021 meeting with the Dinosaur Adventureland members, Jones defended his sharing of the bed with the boy by claiming that he had called the boy's mother, who had said she granted permission. Five days after her son returned from Dinosaur Adventureland, she said he told her he was confused about what he experienced at the park. I said, what happened with you? Your face is almost pale and you feel like you need to say something, but you're scared. Her son told her that Jones had to uh, had touched his privates with a paper towel, and he was also frightened of his total lack of memory of one night in the room. In June, shortly after connecting with Stoney, the boy's mother filed a complaint with the sheriff in Aiken County, South Carolina, where Jones lives. A redacted version of the police report obtained via Freedom of the Information request states that the mother called the sheriff's office and stated to Jones and pulled the victim's pants down along with his underwear and touched his private area with a paper towel. And this is the guy you defend, Kent? Holy fucking shit. This is goddamn disgusting. So the, just fucking... I don't understand. Why... Why is this your guy? Why is this the guy you're defending? This is Chris Jones. Hoven denies knowledge of the police report. I've never heard that report. And I had to accuse him of something to put him in jail because of his political stance. Yet in a voicemail uploaded to YouTube by a Hoven acquaintance, the preacher appears to acknowledge the criminal complaint. In the voicemail, Hoven complains that the boy is pressing charges against Chris Jones. Uh, this whole drama is never going to quit, brother. Just completely ignore them. He then says something indistinct and then adds a bunch of morons. Hoven told the Daily Beast he did not remember the voicemail or its context. And I do not, but uh, you know, what happens in the rest of the world, uh, I can't control. And uh, nothing happened here. If Chris did anything inappropriately, uh, first of all, uh, I don't believe that for a second. But if he did, uh, or maybe if it's an allegation, then you need to talk with him, not me. Uh, it didn't happen here, and we have nothing to do with it. Stoney and the child's mother said they have spoken with investigators about the case. I ain't gonna say no allegation because my son don't have no reason to lie. And there is more. There is so much more. But let's see here. 
part says drugs, a late night raid, and a dead dog. As Dinosaur Adventure Land members fought over the presence of Chris Jones at the Adventure Park, another scandal was roiling in the community, one that concerned Dinosaur Adventure Land's tech guy, Steve Lynn. Lincoln and former DAL resident Jody Pinniger told the Daily Beast that Lynn tampered with a drug test that Hoven required for compound residents. When Lincoln and Stoney reported their concerns to Hoven at the time, they said they were accusing him of fomenting rebellion against the Dinosaur Adventure Land leader, which set off the deterioration of Lincoln's marriage. Jesus fucking Christ. Renita says, hello, I'm at home resting after having to get blood drawn because my doctor held my necessary prescriptions hostage until I did. The fuck? Uh, Renita, I have terrible news. We are going over Kent Hovind and his defenses of a pedophile. So, um, have fun. Reached via phone. Lynn declined to comment, asking for answers, questions via email. Nevertheless, by 2021, Lynn had admitted to drug use in court. Uh, she was arrested for alleged car theft. While disputing the car charge in court, Lynn filed an affidavit blaming the incident on temporary drug-fueled delusion. Ian just said, didn't Ken Hoven release an old video where he spanked Eric so hard that it terrified the boy into gripping the dentist's chair armrest for dear life? Yep, he bragged about it. He said, I affirm that at the time of the date in offense, Lynn wrote, I was under a drug-induced necessity or duress, mistakenly believing that my adult son, who lives in Missouri, had somehow come to Alabama and was in Monroeville Walmart, desperately needing my help, and I abandoned my $45,000 Jeep with the keys in it and running in the Marvin's parking lot, where I took another man's truck, likely valued around $10,000, and had its keys in it and drove to the Monroeville Walmart and parked it, where I had ran inside and that this false but very real to me mental duress was still ongoing when I uh, when and where I was arrested inside Walmart and that I did not resist the officer's arrest. Audio recordings from Dinosaur Adventure Land meeting shortly after his arrest reviewed by the Daily Beast revealed that Hoven acknowledged Lynn's drug use, drug use saying Steve messed up. He got back into drugs. No question. He blew it. Hoven tells congregants who express concern about Lynn's arrest. He goes on to explain that uh, because of the drug he was on, uh, he was hallucinating. He thought the cops were after him, so he didn't get in his car. He got in another car and took off. After Lynn's arrest, uh, Hoven sent followers to clear out Lynn's house. Trevor Gilford, or Gifford, a former Dinosaur Adventure Land resident, told the Daily Beast that he was on campus that night. Uh, I was leaving there in a week, so I wanted, uh, so I wasn't invited to the plunder, but I remembered that night very well. I didn't see them leave, but I did see them return to the Dinosaur Adventure Land with the trailers full of stuff from Steve's house. Fuck. Apparently, the late-night operation left some Dinosaur Adventure Land residents wondering about the raid's legality. During a meeting, uh, the residents pushed Hoven on whether they were legally allowed to remove items from Lynn's house, especially because some might belong to Lynn's non-Dinosaur Adventure Land's clients. Said, if he works for 15 other companies, how do you know all the stuff was CSEs? And that's, uh, oh, in reference to the Christian Science Evangelism Ministry that Kent Hoven operates. So we're clearing out his house with your sign, your phone number, all their stuff. Okay, so I'm not as... Oh, here we are. We're getting to it. Hoven confirmed to the Daily Beast that he had sent workers to clear out the house. He gave the phone number to a resident who said they'd emptied the building because, due to hallucinations, Lynn thought police were going to go in there and ransack his place. Former members also accused Lynn of stealing ministry money and then shooting a dog to death. The morning after Lynn's arrest, Hoven uh, convened a DAL meeting and said Gifford, who attended the gathering, during the meeting, a staffer who'd driven Lynn home from jail told the group that during a ride, Lynn had confessed to embezzling tens of thousands of dollars from the ministry. Asked about the alleged crime, Hoven said Lynn had admitted to using a ministry credit card to buy things that he really should not have and did not have authorization to do. But I think he's made most of that up. I mean, he's repented and given us back some things. The IT worker also removed cash directly from a donation box. 
Uh, Shrunk said that she was in the science center giving a tour. She recalled Steve Lynn pulls up in his car, drives right up to the doors, gets out, goes inside the science center and unlocks the donation box, takes a wad of cash, shoves it in his pocket and gets in a car and leaves. Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> Let's move past this part. I'm not super like, yes, this part is terrible, but eh. moving on. Despite the death of a child at the park and accusations that his friend molested another kid on his watch, Hoven still operates Dinosaur Adventure Land and makes regular videos on YouTube where he has more than 250,000 uh, subscribers. Those fans help comprise what XDAL residents said was a steady churn of new supporters. Meanwhile, Hovind is facing his own criminal case. In 2020, he body slammed Lincoln in their home, sending her to the emergency room according to a protection order. Hovind also took an audio recording of the incident. The disturbing audio includes loud bangs and Lincoln screams, where Hovind states, What are you doing, Cindy? Why would you jump on me and grab me, Cindy? Lincoln said Hoven later distributed the audio as evidence for his claim that Lincoln is bipolar. In 2021, he was convinced of domestic violence in the incident. He denies that he was abusive and is appealing the ruling. While the court case pens, Lincoln is trying to recoup money she lost on the loan she made to Dinosaur Adventureland, which const uh, constituted most of her retirement savings. The church stopped repaying the loan after she left Hovind, she said. She's been unable to find the loan's signatory, a Hovind supporter, to serve him legal papers. The statute of limitations on a lawsuit expires this spring. Instead of retiring as she'd hoped, Lincoln, now 60, has had to re-enter the job market. That's fucked up. I mean, on the one hand, don't give your money to charlatans. On the other hand, yeah, it's really fucked up. Another former Dinosaur Adventureland resident, James Duncan, went public with similar allegations in 2021. He had been a Dinosaur Adventureland member in early 2021, attending the meetings with Jones. He said, I want to make I want to make a public record of Kent Hoven and that he's clearly defrauded me and, uh, and entered into a trust with me in the name of Dinosaur Adventureland and broke that trust, costing me probably over $100,000. Duncan, whose picture still appears on the DAL site, wrote in an anti hoven Facebook group. The Daily Beast was unable to verify the allegation because Duncan died of suicide in late 2022. Duncan's widow told the Daily Beast that she cannot say one way or another that there was a formal trust, that my husband had a knack for following conspiracy theorists, and that she tried to discourage his move down there. She said that her husband likely had approximately $100,000 in belongings and then he moved to Dinosaur Adventureland. He was unable to retrieve his belongings when he left the compound, which set off a bout of depression, his widow said. My husband finally saw them all for the type of people that they are and could not get over the big mistake and disappointment of moving his stuff there. And that's where the article ends. Holy fucking... Shit. Things are not okay in the Kent Hoven compound. Things are not okay at all. People are turn people are dying there. People are getting molested there. People are having their life savings embezzled away from them there. It's one thing for us to have fun and dunk on Kent Hoven here on the internet because he's just that fucked up of a guy but that doesn't change the fact that this rabbit hole goes fucking deep this is horrible Renita says uh, I don't know is he better or worse than Greg Locke I don't know if there's a really good way to compare those two but I am glad you were able to convince your, your best friend to not listen to these types of shitheads yeah, and his YouTube channel got taken down today. I did see that. I did see that. That's at least one part of his revenue stream that's been yanked. And I am all the happier for it. 
Yvonne says, I'm not convinced that Hovind isn't involved in the shit that Jones is doing. I don't... <sighs> to me, I used to live in the same town as Locke. Yeah, everybody in town knew Global Vision was full of lunatics. These people are garbage fires. These people are fucking awful. I don't know what else to say. That was... We, we went from the the trump supporter suicide cult thing to to this and it, it just just stop your entire ministry is a sham everything you do is repugnant it may be time to just disappear just disappear from public knowledge at all Nobody needs your brand of idiocy and cruelty and just the part about him passing out fucking business cards while a family was grieving their dying son. That part strikes a nerve with me. When I worked at a call center, one of the things that made me quit was that call center... It was it was a lift recruitment drive and they wanted me to Okay, Jessica, come on, child. But it was a recruitment uh, drive for Lyft and they wanted me to stay on the phone with any potential prospects for as long as I could to try to convince them to start driving with Lyft. And there was this woman who was in the hospital. Her brother was the one in the hospital. She was waiting. And she was bereft with grief. Like, she was not in a great state. Uh, and I willingly hopped off the phone with her when I realized what was going on. I received an email from my boss saying that I should not have gotten off the phone with that woman. She was a, uh, a potential prospect and that... Uh, by getting off, then I was I was going to be written up for doing that. And I said that I didn't want to accept that write up. I had ethical concerns with the company. If they were going to be the type of company that told me that while somebody was panicking in the hospital, I needed to stay on the phone with them, trying to sell them on a job or, or on anything. And the company, but by the way, by the way, the company was Windy, City Call, uh, Windy Hill Call Center, Windy City Hill windy city call center that's the one just so you know um but i told my boss that it is not up to them what i consider an ethical concern but getting that email from that boss and them telling me that it should not be an ethical concern uh that this person was you know, grieving in a hospital and worried in a hospital, and I decided to hop off. I, when I hear shit like Kent Hoven passing out his fucking dinosaur adventure land shit while a family is grieving, I'm feeling that scenario again. It was gross to deal with when I was going through it, and it's gross to deal with when I'm listening about an apologist doing it. Yeah, the man has no empathy whatsoever. <sighs> I don't have much more I can say about this. He's a he's a gross human being that has absolutely no business having any position of power. And I can't wait for the day to come where there's actually a full ass documentary going over all the terrible shit that Kent Hovind has been up to and responsible for. And this cat is not having a good time. <laughs> but let me know what you think in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. I insert in the video tagline here.